Thank you very much for that beautiful song. Amen. Amen. And I'm so happy about this privilege to be with you, especially for this uh, week of spiritual refreshing. And I'd like to say thank you for the trust that you have given to me. My prayer is that uh, I could help that you'll be inspired as you work here at Montague College, an institution put up by our God. According to the printed program that the speaker for this morning is uh, Pastor Palomares. I'd like to make it clear that I'm not Pastor Palomares. <laughs> Kasi magingon mo, wako mo tayo sa pastor. I am still the, the old silver whale. Thank you for the introduction. Actually, during my younger time, they called me silver. At this time, many of them are calling me silver. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my wife. Amen. This is the last session, and she opted to to come to have the documentation. <laughs> and I should be very careful. And uh, I'm so happy of her presence. And I'd like also to say happy birthday to my co-member of the committee before. That's Mam Vidal. I always uh, visited her during her birthday, during the time that I was working, and even when I retired. This morning I visited her, but I was just outside. Why I always visited her? Because she's a good friend, and also she is July born. I noticed that those who are born in July, katagan and beautiful and handsome. I was born on July 13. <laughs> so I don't know if my observation is correct. Correct, man. If correct, say amen. amen. Now we have a very important topic because our thing is that how to be happy and feel be fulfilled in the workplace. And the last topic is a parable. And I entitled it. The parable of modern vision. And this is actually taken from a wise, the one that I read, written by an activist pastor, Yuri Shibol. He submitted an article to uh, Nakisaya Pages. Uh, Reader's Digest. Reader's Digest. And I found this article and I tried to revise it to. I made it as a parable for you, for vision. First, I'd like to ask you to open your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, and also Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Can you memorize that? Godliness with contentment is great gain. And in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Now, I have written, at this time I'm using the PowerPoint, and I'd like to invite you to read the parable. The parable of modern vision. One day, the boy said to God, I have been thinking, and I know what I want to become when I become a man. What, said God, I want to live abroad, I want to migrate in USA and live in a big house with three cars, one for my wife, 
one for me and one for the use for our vacation. I want to marry a woman who is beautiful and tall, good earnings, and can sing and play piano. I want, I want three strong sons to play ball with. When they grow up, one will be great scientist, one will be politician, and the youngest will be professional athlete. I want to be an adventurer. I want to tour Europe and many countries around the world. God said, that sounds like a nice dream. I want you to be happy. One day, playing ball, the boy hurt his knee. After that, he couldn't travel. So he studied marketing and employed in the institution with good salary. He married a girl who was very beautiful, but not tall, very kind, who, has, who had long hair, black hair, but she was short. She couldn't, she couldn't play piano or even sing. But she prepared wonderful meals, very cheerful and kind and loving and so passionate to do mission work. He lives in Ibiza, instead in America, with his wife living in a modest house and they regularly stroll at Jubilee Park and sometimes stroll at the beautiful mountains of Okino and travel to Samal and Muratai. He had three daughters. He didn't play ball with him, but sometimes he went to auditorium and played badminton. Except to the youngest who sat under the tree, strumming their guitar and singing lovely haunting songs. He made enough money to live comfortably, but he had one car instead of three. He had two villagers to cook for them and clean the house. One day, the man awoke and remembered his dream. I'm very sad, he said to his best friend. Why? asked his friend. Because I once dreamed of marrying a tall woman with good income. But my wife has bigger income and she cannot play the piano and she is not tall. Your wife is very beautiful and very kind, said his friend. She cooks delectable food. She is so kind and cheerful. But the man wasn't listening. I'm very sad. Man said to his wife, his wife, why? Because I once dreamed of living in a big house in America and having three cars. Instead, I live in faculty home with only three bedrooms. And we have only one car. Our house is comfortable and we can see the beautiful view from our house. We have plenty of fruits. Some are from our neighbor. <laughs> Banana is cheap. It is even delivered in our doorstep by pastor. <laughs> we have love. We have laughter and good healthy food. Not to mention sometimes that is Manok Pakisaya from our neighbor. <laughs> Three beautiful children, said his wife. But the man wasn't listening. I am very sad, the man said to his therapist. Why? asked the therapist. Because I once dreamed that I would grow up to be a great adventurer. Instead, I am a bad businessman working here at Mountain New Tallis. I am very sad, the man said to his pastor. Why? asked the pastor. Because I once dreamed of having three sons, a great scientist, a politician, and a professional athlete. Instead, I had three daughters. But two daughters are beautiful and intelligent, said the pastor. They love you very much, and they have all done well. One is a nurse, another is an artist, 
and the youngest teaches music to children. But the man wasn't listening. He was so sad that he became very sick. He lay in a hospital room surrounded by nurses in white uniforms. Tubes and wires connected his body in the drinking machines. He was terribly, tragically sad. His family, friends, and pastor gathered around his bed. They were all deeply sad too. One day, in his sick bed, we had confrontation with God. God, did you remember what I told you when I was still a boy? I told you what I want. Why you did not give it to me? I could have, said God. But I wanted to surprise you with things you didn't dream of. I suppose you have noticed that I have given you a kind, beautiful wife, a good job, a nice place to live, three beautiful daughters, one of the best packages that I have put together. Yes, interrupted the man, but I thought you were going to give me what I really wanted. And I thought you were going to give me what I really wanted, said God to What did you want? Asked the man. It had been never occurred to him that God was in want of anything. I wanted you. I wanted to make you happy with what I have given you, said God. You have not even given thanks to me. The man lay in the dark all night thinking of the statement of God. Finally, he decided to dream a new dream. One in which he had dreamed years before. He decided to dream that what he wanted most were the very things he already had. And a man got well and lived happily, enjoying a beautiful view, strolling at Dublin Park, enjoying his children's beautiful voices, his wife's cheerfulness and kindness. At night, he gazed at the beautiful stars and enjoyed playing tennis with the winds and contentedly watched the lights of the city dwindling on one by one as he strolled at Jubilee Park. That's the parable of a modern English. It's not, it's just a parable. And I hope that nobody here could relate and live that kind of parable. I hope that everybody here are working, recognizing God's blessings, and you are people, happy people. You know the good life exists only when we appreciate what God has given us every day. I would like to repeat a good life exists only when we can appreciate what God has given us every and become grateful to Him, not focusing on what is lacking. I came across the statement. A boy looks at the passing airplane and says, Someday, I will be happy by taking that airplane. While in the airplane, the pilot looks below of the place of the boy and see the green field and said, someday I'll be happy doing gardening and farming. So happiness is actually in your own perspective. Let us review again our text for today. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, where we are content. Many, many of our unhappiness are actually rooted to the problem of the attitude of this content. If you are not happy, you try to examine 
Maybe the problem is not the environment. Maybe the problem is your attitude. Because many of our unhappiness are brought into the problem of attitude of discontentment. Not that we don't have, but because our eyes become dim to the blessings that we receive from God. Even, even with all the best that God has given to us, we still could not be happy when we focus on not what God has given. Just in case that you are struggling with an happiness and discontentment, you know the antidote of discontentment is Jesus Christ. If each one of us are in love with Jesus Christ, whatever the circumstance that we are in, we could still find peace and happiness, even though we are here at Mount Eucalyptus. Maybe we are in a poor country, we could still find joy and happiness. The antidote is Jesus Christ. As the song says, Jesus, you are the center of our joy. All oh, that good and perfect comes from you. Good gift and perfect, perfect gift comes from you. You are the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Another antidote for this contentment is, uh, is gratitude. Cultivate the spirit of gratitude. Be thankful always. As 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16, verse 18, the Council of Paul, Rejoice always. Shall we say it together? Rejoice, Rejoice always. always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will for you in Christ Jesus. Are you acquainted with the song, Count Your Blessings? Many times we are not thankful because we miss counting our blessings. Fridays, every morning when you wake up, come, you have plenty, many blessings that you receive. I am now in starting in a bonus time because according to the, to the Bible, 70 years is being given to man. And for the reason of health, he will live more than 70 years. But the quality of life after 70 years is not really so far quality. I celebrated my 70th birthday. And you know, I received so much gift. I'm so thankful to the Lord. I hope that my eyes are not dim to see the blessing of the Lord. Every morning, I wake up and look at the mountains and look at those birds and say, Thank you, Heavenly Mother. When I go biking, thank you, Heavenly Mother. When some people commented to me as if that you did not grow old, I don't know if it's correct. <laughs> I said to the Lord, Thank you, Lord, because you postponed my aging process. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that at the age of 70, you know, I'm now 70, but I'm not old because I adjusted the standard of old age. When I was 14, I'm not a Pardon me to, to just call you Nonoy because it means that we are very close. I will not call you doctor. When I was 40, those who are 60 are old people. When I stepped to 60, I adjusted it to 70. Now that I'm 70, I'm old, I'm definition of old, when you are 85. <laughs> so, I'm so thankful for strength. I'm so thankful for the job. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to serve, especially in this institution. If you are thankful that you are serving here, it's not by accident that you are serving here. Say a big amen. amen. Those of you who are not so happy because you have so many problems, maybe you look at the blessing side 
and say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we have so much to be thankful. And part, if you are if you are sad and discontented, the antidote is that be with Jesus Christ. The antidote is that cultivate the spirit of gratitude. And the antidote is that count your blessings, name them one by one. And I'd like to sing. All of us will sing this morning about the reminder eh, that if you want to be happy, count your many, many blessings. And I said, I will count many, many blessings that I receive from the Lord. And I praise God. Every time that I'm sad, every time that I question God, I count the many, many blessings. I'm so happy that I'm still alive. I'm so happy that I will still go. I'm so happy that God will still use me. I'm so happy that God will still use me. I'm so happy that God will still use me. I'm so happy that God will still use me. Count your many blessings. Thank you. Devotional during this colloquium. You are now standing in the presence of the Lord. 
expressing your thanksgiving to Him. Shall we go against? Father, we have so much to be thankful to you. Please accept our thanksgiving today. Lord, we are so thankful for the privilege to participate in your work, especially in this line of uh, education. We are so happy, Lord, of the trust that you have given to us. Thank you, thank you very much. Happy for family. Happy for sustaining us our needs. Happy for the beautiful place. Happy for the many, many good things. Yes, we encountered stresses and problems, but happy that because of you, we still could pull up and we could be happy to experience joy and fulfillment. Thank you, Lord. And now, as your servant, your minister, I raise my right hand to say blessing to those who are standing and those who opted to come for this devotional, for this worship. I need bless each one of us at this very moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.